Right. Very, very, very good. What's your name? Sita Purva. Apurva, it's very good that you are questioning a deep assumption. Hmm? The assumption of morality. That what is right and what is wrong. You have gone many steps ahead. But still you have stopped. You are not completing the journey. You must not only ask, Sir, who decides what is right and what is wrong? You can go a step ahead, a step further and ask whether there is anything right and anything wrong. You still have a belief that there is something right and there is something wrong, right? You are believing in that. I am asking you, why must you believe in that? You have limited your question. You are saying, sir, yes, there is something right and there is something wrong. But who will decide that? Your question is limited to this part. That who will decide what is right and what is wrong? I am saying broaden your question. Take one more step. Ask whether there is anything called right and wrong. Can we ask that question? Do you want me to broaden it? All right. What is right? What is wrong? You are born and if these two words are not given to you, would there be any problem with living? Would you not be able to breathe? Would the essentials of life be lost to you? How would man be a lesser being if there is nothing called right and wrong in his vocabulary? Tell me. There is the beautiful grass outside. It knows no right and wrong. And it's still beautiful. It is not depressed. It does not have diabetes or heart attack. And it is not sinning either. The clouds, the animals, the rivers, they don't have any sense of right and wrong. Yet they are all firmly grounded in their being. You do not see an animal raping another animal. You do not see ethnic cleansing in jungles. You do not see that one animal was so violent that it caused an entire species to get extinct. Do you see all this? You don't see organized wars amongst trees. Now they don't have any sense of right and wrong and yet they are alright. And man has such great systems of morality and yet man is a mass murderer. Man has caused thousands of species to get extinct and they will never come back. Man is causing this very planet to be destroyed in a couple of decades. And man rapes and man kills and man is full of tension and misery and suffering. And man hoards. Is that not surprising? Except the child of man, nothing in existence is told about right and wrong and yet it is man who seems to be the worst offender of all. Man is told so much about love. Hmm? Love is this, love is that, you must love this, you must love that and you have movies on love and literature and so much. And yet, hardly any creature is as loveless as man. Don't you see? Look at that stray dog on the street. It does not have anything and people keep kicking it and hitting it with stones. Hmm? And so many stray dogs keep getting crushed under our vehicles. And yet all you have to do is just call it with a little bit of affection. And what does it do? It comes to you. 
even if you have nothing to give it, it will still come to you and stay with you and follow you. In fact, you will get fed up after a while and you will ask the dog to go away. But it will be with you. Is that not so, Apurva? The dog knows love in spite of never having been taught anything about love and man is continuously being taught love and man does not know love. The dog fully well knows that it is right to be loyal to the hand that feeds you. The dog knows and the dog has never been trained in loyalty. Hmm? But man, man stabs in the back. Man stabs in the back. No dog stabs in the back. And man has been given ample lessons on loyalty and fidelity. Hmm? Man has devised so many ways to try to become happy. To somehow get joy. But nothing in existence dies of heart attack as man does. You don't see animals suffering from high BP and hypertension. You go to a jungle, before you click the picture of a butterfly, do you ask the butterfly to go wash its face? Nothing in existence makes itself up. The butterfly is beautiful as it is and it is beautiful only as it is. You change anything about the butterfly and something reduces. Man wants to do a lot and in doing a lot, he only degrades himself. That which is central that which is really important is beyond right and wrong. You must have heard of Rumi, hmm? the poet, the Sufi poet. And there's a beautiful line in which he says something like this to his lover, that there is a field beyond right and wrong. I'll meet you there. There is a field beyond right and wrong. I'll meet you there. What is this right and wrong? Nothing but mischief of man's mind. And because it's mischief of man's mind, it keeps changing. What is right today will not be right tomorrow. What was right yesterday is considered so wrong today. What is right even today in one country or one religion is very wrong in another country and another religion. Nothing, artificial, man-made productions like goods coming out of a factory. Their design keeps changing all the time. Something is in fashion today, tomorrow it goes out of fashion. That's what is right and wrong. How can you take these things seriously? To live in your essential nature is the only right. And this is a secret that entire existence knows. Live as you are and you are alright. And try to become something else. Try to wear a mask. Try to make yourself up. And you have wronged. That is the only wrong. The only right is to be aware of your nature and live in it, live by it and die by it. If the cost is death, pay the price. Love, truth, freedom, joy, Simplicity, these are the essentials of living. 
you understand essential by essential we don't mean something that must be there by essential i mean something that is there that is your very nature that is your very essence essential in that sense these are already there you need not teach love to somebody you need not tell your kid that you must love mama and papa what is this you need not teach the kid that you must speak the truth truth is nature our very central nature in fact by teaching truth you produce an army of liars by teaching love you only produce indifference by teaching freedom we have created a world of bonded laborers you need not tell somebody that it is right to be free even a small child knows that freedom is precious try caging a small kid try it already knows that freedom is right you need not teach that this is right and that is wrong when animals know that freedom is right how will humans not know everything in the world knows that freedom is right even plants do not like being caged so why do you need to teach right and wrong that which is really important is already known to us rest need not be taught will you remember this that which is really important is already known to us rest need not be taught rest will anyway be just a burden those who want to live freely must first of all have a mind free of right and wrong remember the only right is to be aware of your nature and live in it the only wrong is to have an artificial personality there is nothing else that is wrong